This is pretty cool. Uh, Linda McCune just gave me uh, this uh, little daily prayer booklet, and actually today is the day that uh, Blessed Carlos Acutis died on. So. Uh, if you remember Blessed Carlo, we had his relics here a couple years ago, and he is, you know, in many ways, an apostle of the Eucharist, and uh, today was the day that he died on, and it's his feast day. So, yeah, died as a young man, a uh, big promoter of, of the Eucharist. Thank you. Yep, perfect. All right. Okay, all right, well, we'll... Uh, We'll jump right in. There's going to be, uh, this one is a lot of just practical stuff. So if you are um, yeah, going to be an extraordinary minister of Holy Communion at Mass uh, or take communion to the sick. So there will be a lot of kind of practical things and feel free to ask questions. Uh, but going to begin with a little scripture. This is from John's, uh, the Gospel according to John, chapter 6. Verse 12. So this is the feeding of the 5,000. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing that a multitude was coming to him, Jesus said to Philip, How are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? This he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the man sat down in number about five thousand. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign which, the, which he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Gather up the fragments left over, that nothing may be lost. So this uh, story, the feeding of the 5,000, uh, of course, uh, points to, points towards, is a foreshadowing of uh, the Eucharist and the Eucharistic sacrifice. And we're instructed uh, by the Lord Jesus to ensure uh, that none of the particles are lost. And so we want to give our greatest care uh, because in each, each particle, in each drop of, of precious blood, uh, in each fragment of the consecrated host is Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Um, and there's a fancy word that we use in the church called uh, concomitance. It's a kind of a theological word, helps us to understand, um, yeah, what basically the, the nature of the, the consecrated species. Um, and so that means that concomitance is that, you know, whether it's the precious blood uh, or the, the consecrated host, that Jesus is fully present in each. So body, blood, soul, and divinity. So for example, like if you receive the host, but you don't receive the precious blood from the chalice, you're not missing out, okay? You, you receive all of Jesus in the one. That's why it's not necessary to receive both. And even in extreme cases, like if someone can't receive, which I've never heard of, but this has happened where somebody would receive only from the chalice um, instead of from the, from the host. Actually, you know what? I have heard of that. There have been some people, like if there's no low gluten host consecrated, that someone will receive from the chalice only, and that's okay. Okay, that's, that's totally fine. Um, so yeah, body, blood, soul, and divinity in each particle. Uh, and we want to give our greatest care uh, for, you know, for each, um, yeah, each particle. Okay, so the first one on receipt catechesis for receiving the body and blood of the Lord. Um, 
the first section just talks about the, the real presence, uh, right, what it is, the Eucharist, the memorial of Christ's sacrifice, his death and resurrection as the sacred banquet, um, yeah, Christ's real presence in the Eucharistic elements, uh, demands our reverence at all times, uh, in the sacred liturgy or outside of the sacred liturgy. So that means, you know, even though it's outside of Mass, it's still Jesus. We have to give our greatest reverence if we're handling it or, or bringing it to the sick. Um, and, uh, yeah, and the ordinary minister of Holy Communion is the priest or the bishop um, or the deacon. The it was really the priest or the bishop. Uh, the extraordinary would be uh, ministers of the Eucharist, those assigned to, to an assembly. Um, and then this just further goes on to give some expl you know, further explanation for that when it, there is a need uh, you know, for a specific reason, um, duly instituted acolyte or even other faithful who have been du duly deputed for this purpose. In case of necessity, uh, the priest may depute suitable faithful for this single occasion. Extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion should receive sufficient spiritual, theological, and practical preparation to fulfill their role with knowledge and reverence. Okay, so just kind of what we're doing now, uh, trying to, yeah, to give some, some formation, some training. Uh, all ministers of Holy Communion should show the greatest reverence for the Most Holy Eucharist by their demeanor, by their attire, and the manner in which they handle the consecrated elements. Um, yeah, should there be any mishap when, for example, the consecrated wine spills, or would say the precious blood spills from the chalice, then the affected area should be washed with water, and this water should then be poured into the sacrarium. I'll talk a little bit more about that, but that's kind of jumping ahead. Um, so yeah, just again to reiterate, we want to give our greatest care for the Lord. That's why we take time to, to purify all the sacred vessels at Mass. You know, we take our time, wash with water, consume, make sure we don't lose any particles. Um, yeah. All right, so it's important that we use the correct language as well um, when we're when we are talking about uh, communion. So first of all, maybe just to start, uh, the language extraordinary minister of Holy Communion um, is, is not a Eucharistic minister, strictly speaking. So this is just term, termino terminology here. A Eucharistic minister is a priest or someone who's ordained, a priest or a bishop uh, ordained for that. An extraordinary minister of Holy Communion would be anyone else who's, who's not ordained for that. Um, so, and also we have what's called an acolyte. Okay, an acolyte is an official uh, role in the church. So like David, our seminarian, he's an instituted acolyte. So what that means is there are certain things he can do, um, but he could do it anywhere throughout the whole church. So for example, like he could distribute, uh, he could be an extraordinary minister of Holy Communion here, but he could also go like to... If he was in a different country or something like that, he could do that because it's officially recognized role in the church, and uh, that usually that's pretty extensive training, and he does that in seminary. He's officially instituted acolyte. An extraordinary minister of Holy Communion is instituted for this parish um, or this archdiocese. But like if you're going, and, and that's why we have to send your names to the bishop and he approves that. But for example, if you're going like to visit the Vatican, you can't say like, hey, I got this. I'm an extraordinary minister of Holy Communion. You know, I've been trained, you know. That doesn't how it work. Your, your approval is, is for, yeah, is for here. Um, of course, just we've talked a little bit about this, but you know, it, it is a service, right? We're serving the Lord. It's not the Eucharist, not our personal possession, it belongs to the church. Uh, it is the Lord. And um, yeah. Uh, 
We're, we're, we're deputed for a, for a specific purpose. Okay. All right. Um, also, more on just the terminology, just using the proper language. We want to make sure that we use the proper language when we're talking about the Eucharist, uh, you know, to, to call it what, it what it truly is. So, you know, at the beginning of Mass, the bread and the wine are brought up, but after they're consecrated, it's the body of Christ and the precious blood. So we want to make sure we use those terms and don't say, like, you're distributing the wine or, like, you know, you're distributing the bread. Um, yeah, body of Christ, precious blood. It's good. It's, we just, you know, we should be calling, you know, the Lord, uh, what, calling it what it is. Uh, but it's also really good for other people, too, you know, to be reminded. It helps them, you know, if, if we're the ones who are going through the training and out there in the church, you know, distributing uh, the Lord in the Eucharist, but then we're going home and calling it like the bread and the wine or like the cup and the, even like the cup and the bowl, we should, we should say chalice or precious blood and the, you know, the body of Christ or the patent. Um, and I'll send this out so you don't have to like memorize these words right now. I'll send these words out. Um, another example, an analogy, and not a perfect analogy, but analogies aren't always perfect, would be like, you know, today there's this big debate in the scientific world about like what, what is a human being? When does that start? You know, some people are like, oh, it's just a glob of cells in, in the woman's tummy, right? Like, well, no, it's a person, right? Like, it's a, there's someone there. It's a real person. They're like, no, it's just a bundle of cells. It's just a bundle of cells until, you know, whenever. And it's like, well, no, like, I'm, you know, I'm 33-year-old bundle of cells, but that's not really the right definition for me, you know? Like, uh, so we want to use, we want to use the, the right words, the right definition uh, to give honor to the Lord, to just, yeah, speak the truth and to help other people, too. Um, and, you know, it's good to teach people. It's just like a teaching moment, right? Like, oh, you know, actually, well, it's, it's consecrated, so it's the blood of Christ, or it's the body of Christ, you know, so we should call it what it is. You don't have to, like, be angry about it, you know, like, ah, it's not the wine. What are you, a pagan? You know, it's the precious blood. Get it right, you know. <laughs> you don't have to be that way. You know, you, we want to be kind and, and, and teach people, you know, because people do forget. Um... All right, uh, other things in handling the Eucharist. So uh, just as an aside, we'll have a training at each church that will kind of walk you through the basics. So like this is where you'll walk up. This is where you'll, the priest will, you know, give you Holy Communion and then he'll, you know, pass on the, the chalice or the patent. So all that like really practical stuff we'll do in the churches uh, in November. Uh, however... Yeah, I'll talk about some of the other things, uh, practical things here that we could all talk about together. So in handling the Eucharist, um, afterwards we're going to purify our fingers. And there's little, you'll see those little tiny bowls with the water in them. Um, there's one by the, should be one by the tabernacles. There's also one by the the table that's called the credence table, but the table, and you, we just after we get little fragments on our fingers, and even if we don't see any, we just go wash wash your fingers in there and dry them on the little white cloth there, um, and then that water will eventually pour out on the ground into the ground or down the the sacrarium, which is the drain that goes right into the into the ground. Okay. Um, Spills and fallen fragments or particles. Um, so if at Mass, if this happens, um, we'll start with the body of Christ first. So if someone drops a host, um, the best thing to do would be to, um, you could pick up the host that's fallen. Um, and you could tell maybe if there's a person in line there, just tell them like, hey, could you wait here and mark this spot? I'll be right back. Just wait here until I get back. And then you'd take the host and put it on the priest's patent up on the altar. And then um, 
there'd be a, a purificator up there by the priest's patent, and you could take that off of the altar and go like place it on the spot where the host fell so that we know where it fell. And then later, um, at the end of the distribution of Holy Communion, you could take uh, some the water that's in the little water container cruet that the servers have and and pour some water there and clean it up like pour pour some water down to soak it up and then just wipe it up with the, the purificator um yeah and then the priest will consume that host and sometimes it'll happen people will just pick it right up and consume it okay um or yeah any questions on that Yes. Should the um, extraordinary minister ever consume it themselves or always take it and put it on the altar? I would say take it and put it on the altar. Yeah, that's just the, I think it's the easiest way because some people don't want to and yeah it's, it's the proper way so we should do the yeah that'd be the proper way i know that it has happened other ways before and that's it we're just trying to give our best to the lord and, and protect the lord um but yeah that would that's the way we should do it yes sir what like at the man somebody then what do we do with that um then yeah in that case um I would, you could bring it back if you've distributed the other uh, Holy Communion. You could bring it back and then put it in a, um, put it in the, uh, um, the little bowl that they purify their fingers in, and then just let the priest know right away, like, hey, I put it in there, it'll dissolve, and then uh, once it dissolves and changes, um, the uh, presence of Christ is no longer there, and so then we would just, we could just pour it, you know, down the drain. Um, that's a, yeah, that's a good question. I've also had people say, this happened to somebody, where um, one of the residents like spit it out and then they brought it back and did that same thing, like put it in a cup, a cup of water, uh, just to make sure you let the priest know right away. Um, yeah. Yes? Yeah, and that happened to me before. Mm -hmm. But then, if priests do like what they did there, I mean, they just put it in a cup of water and the nurse will take it back and put it in the tabernacle and um, you could, if you, yeah, I mean, whatever container you, you have with you, um, yeah, you could put it in a, a cup of water, I guess, if you had to. Uh, yeah. If it's like, you know, already dissolving because it's been in someone's mouth. Yeah, then you could probably put it in a, yeah, a cup of water. If they have a glass cup of water, that'd be more fitting than like a styrofoam cup of water, for sure. But if we come back, is it okay to put it in a tabernacle so we can tell the priest or no? Because it's usually on the weekend and everybody's busy. Yeah, well, the priest should be around on the weekend, yeah. Um, yeah, you could put it in the tabernacle. But let me double check on that. Because I'm about to leave, and Father Sean might have a different opinion. Yes. So, if uh, the same situation at, at a nursing home or something, if the nurse comes in and takes it, if it hasn't put it in their mouth yet, mm -hmm. but it takes it from you, and then if they had, you know, held it in their hand, would you do the same? And then they don't take, you know, they don't put it in their mouth. Would it be the same um, situation? I mean, with that, if it's, I would just take it and put it back in the um, the picks that you have, and bring it back here. And you could just leave the picks in the tabernacle and say, "Hey, Father, somebody, you know, they didn't, they took, they, you know, took it, but they didn't receive it, and so I brought it back and put it in the tabernacle. That's what I would do. Yeah. In the tabernacle. Yeah, in the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good question. Mm -hmm. uh, during COVID, I've taken in, you know, the person who was there. So, you know, and then I thought, well, you know, maybe I can take the hope. But we can't take the hope because he explained that it's, it's a gift. So you really can't take the hope to everybody. Or take it to someone else. 
Right, right. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Um, yeah, good questions. So on the precious blood, if the precious blood spills, and this does happen, certainly happened when I've been here, um, the proper way to care for it would be, so you, if you're distributing, you'll have a purificator. So to just put the purificator down to, to soak up whatever is there, and then tell you know the person in line just to wait there um, till you get back. And then you could go get some water and kind of wash the area. You could put, first place the chalice just on the, on the altar, uh, and then you could go get some water and, and clean up whatever is uh, remaining there. Um, if it spills on someone, this has happened too, um, yeah, they should just tell them like, hey, well, yeah. In that case, they probably want to talk to the priest after Mass. Um, would probably be the easiest thing, but uh, you know, say if it, somebody were to spill it on you, um, to just like you would caring for a sacred linen, soak it um, in water, and then you know maybe for like several hours, and then um, you would then take that water uh, and pour it out on the ground, and then you could you know wash whatever it is. Yeah, does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. If, if it hits the clothing that they're wearing, you should you should tell them to come and talk to the priest after mass, because it might be a lot to explain. Like this is how you should take care of your jacket. You know, like take it off, put it, soak it in water, and then pour it out on the ground. And yeah, so maybe like okay, uh, well come come and see the priest after mass, um, and you know, hof hopefully they do. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. good question. So the precious blood you would take care of right away, whereas the body of Christ, if you pick that up off the floor and you make sure you mark that spot, you put that... Yeah, so what happens, say, like if somebody dropped a host, I would pick it up, take it, put it on the priest's paten, take the purificator from the altar, and then mark that spot, and then keep distributing. And you would clean that after you finish. Finish distributing, yeah. The precious blood you do. Yeah, I would do. I would do immediately. Yeah, uh, just set. Yeah, set it down. Um, set. Yeah, soak it up, and then yeah. Yeah. And soak it up, but also go get some water and clean it better before you would continue. Yeah, that's what I would do. Because what will happen is, like, you'll set, say, like, if this, you know, there was uh, a spill of the precious blood, if you set this down, um, somebody's going to pick it up. So that's why you tell the next person in line, like, keep this here, I'm going to come back and clean this up. Because people will immediately pick it up. Even if they see you put it down, it's amazing. People will come and pick it up right away. I think, you know, they're just trying to help, I guess. But... So yeah, that's why it's best to just try to soak it up right away, go and clean it up first. And you don't really want to be like carrying the precious blood around as you're like trying to clean and water and all that. Just leave that on the altar, clean it up. Even if distribution of Holy Communion is fine, done at that point, you know, the priest and the deacon or whoever's there can help to consume the rest of the precious blood. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'll s send out some instructions so you don't have to keep it all in your head. Um, all right. Uh, but yeah, important stuff. Other things, uh, when you're distributing, if somebody doesn't look Catholic, you know, you could just ask them, like, hey, are you Catholic? Sometimes people will come up and they just, like, don't know what to do with their hands. They're kind of like, you know, just like, oh, are you, are you Catholic? Uh, no, I'm not Catholic. Okay, well... Uh, you know, God bless you, or like receive Jesus in your heart, I think is probably the best, best thing to say. Um, and then just give them a little bow, and usually people are like, oh, okay, bow, all right. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to ask people, you know, you, you'll, you'll, you could kind of catch it sometimes when people come up and they just look like they're out of place. Um, or they don't say amen, and they seem like they should be saying amen, you know, like, um, just ask. Um, 
if they're if they, sometimes they'll take the Eucharist, like they might receive the Eucharist and start walking away, and they really don't look like they know what they're doing. And then you act, they go and ask them, like, "Hey, are you are you Catholic?" Oh, no, I'm not. Okay, and then you could just take the Eucharist back and say, "Okay, I have to take this back then." Um, that happens on occasion. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, we got to protect the Eucharist, so don't let people take it, you know. It's not, it's not our possession, it's not their possession. Um, if somebody does, and like say you're like, I think they consume the Eucharist, but I'm not totally sure, just like make sure you tell like the deacon or the priest, or an usher, or something like that. Like, hey, you know, or like get somebody else like, hey, I don't know if this person received. Could you like help me go ask this person if you're afraid of confronting someone? Just gets the ushers or something like that. Um, yeah. If they, sometimes they are Catholic and they just like receive the Eucharist and they don't, they don't consume it. And so like, yeah. If I go after them, I'll say, like, hey, are you Catholic? Yeah, I'm Catholic. You have to receive the Eucharist or give it back to me. And then usually they'll, they'll receive or I'll take it back. Um, other things? Um, yeah, we... Uh, yeah, when people come up in communion line, um, don't bless them on their forehead or otherwise. I know that like, maybe at some point it became a thing with priests doing it, probably started with the priests or, or wherever it started. Um, it's not the place to give people blessings or to touch them. So, um, cause sometimes people will do this. They'll like, especially for kids, they'll like pat them on the head or like give them a sign of the cross on their forehead. And then you're just like putting particles of Jesus maybe on their forehead, which isn't good. But it's not the place to do that, and it's not what the church asks. So you could say, God bless you, or, you know, receive Jesus in your heart, but it's not the time to be touching other people's children or them. Um, yeah. Yes? So, uh, sometimes at the nursing home, um, we have others, you know, uh, non-Catholics will come to play. Mm -hmm. And uh, at communion time, uh, Um, I think I think the best thing to do would just say like receive Jesus in your heart because uh, especially saying like God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that's like what the church uses when they're officially blessing things that like only priests or like deacons would do so yeah we shouldn't say like may Almighty God bless you in the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit because um, that's we don't want to confuse people um, yeah. I wouldn't, because if you're already distributing communion, you should, you might have the Eucharist on your hand, and so, yeah, I wouldn't touch them. Yeah, I, I just wouldn't. I don't, I don't think there's a need to touch them, you know. Yeah. Um, good question. Uh, other things, um, just another thing, I don't think this happens too much anymore, but intinction is a word for when people would take the host and dip it in the precious blood and then consume it, um, which is, uh, is not allowed in this country by like the, the laity. Priests might do it at like big masses, because priests have to receive the body and the blood at mass for them to, like if they're, if they're concelebrating or if they're the main celebrant, they have to receive both species. So sometimes you'll see that at big concelebrating masses where they'll take a host, dip it in the precious blood and consume it. But people are not, uh, non-ordained are not to do that. But sometimes it, it became a thing at one point, so people would like receive the Eucharist in their hand, go over to the precious blood and want to dip it in. And sometimes that's, people will come to church that 
still want to do that, and that's not allowed. So you just get say, sorry, yeah, we can't, you can't do intinction here. You just have to receive. You can receive the host, and then you could receive from the chalice, but yeah. Um, was going to do that, and automatically my hand just went over the cup, and mm -hmm. he said, why can't I? I said, talk to the priest after. Yeah, perfect, perfect response. You can always tell him to just talk to the priest, yeah, if you don't know the answer, that's fine. That's fine, yeah, good job, good job. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, um, the priest, yeah, the priest or deacon, so after, if you still have remaining precious blood, this is another thing. If you still have remaining precious blood after everybody's gone through, you're actually supposed to bring it to the altar, not just consume it on the spot. So you're supposed to bring it to the altar. The priest may give it back and say, body of blood of Christ, please help me to consume this. That's okay, but you're not supposed to, just at the end of the line, uh, you know, consume it right there. Um, another thing, um, no filling of people's, if somebody brings up a PIX in line, sometimes this happens, they'll be like, hey, I'm from out of town and my cousin's sick, can I have three hosts? We don't do that, not in communion line, you can't, we don't really do that for anybody outside the parish anyway. You can't just like be at a visiting parish and say like, hey, I need communion. If, if you're not trained here, we don't know you, we're not gonna give you communion to take out. Um, but yeah, sometimes people will do that in line. They'll just say like, three, please. Um, and we, <laughs> yeah, so we can't do that, we can't do that. Um, all right, the other thing is people might, people might say, um, can I have an, an additional host for like my mom who's, sick in the back or can't walk. And then in that instance, uh, you'd say, well, no, but I can bring her Holy Communion. So why don't you like, l you know, stand by the side here or lead me back and I'll give her Holy Communion at the end or something like, or like stand off to the side. I'll come and at the end, I'll, I'll, you could bring me back and I'll give Holy Communion to your your mother who can't walk or whatever it is. Um, that happens and that's okay. But yeah, we don't give them extra hosts in line. Um, Father, could I mention that too? Sometimes, I mean, I had a host in here lately who did a different priest at times when they were sitting in the handicap and um, they made the age wholesome. Could they get for God? I've been there when that's happened. Right. But, Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, if you're, you know, distributed on, like, the Mary side, but you notice that nobody took communion to the handicap side, you could go over and do that. That's, that's good, and that's fine. I mean, especially visiting priests, they don't know. And things are going to be different every time there's a visiting priest, as you know. So we're trying to do our best. Um, yeah, so... Good, good point. Um, okay, so I think that's everything on that. Um, the last thing is just the homebound, bringing communion to the homebound, a couple things, uh, the sick or the homebound, uh, just basic stuff, go straight there and straight back, so no like, you know, no, yeah, no McDonald's, no, you know, taking a, whatever, going to the gym. Um, yeah, straight there, straight back. You're on a mission, okay, just fulfill the mission. Um, yeah, you're basically, you think of it like being in adoration, you know, so just like s some time to spend with the Lord. You're driving, you know, just to pray and know that the Lord is with you. Um, that's good, yeah, just, you know be reverent. Um, 
Yeah, another thing, so what pixes should be made of, Father Sean has said that he's going to get some new pixes. This is, these are the, this is what I'm talking about. We carry the Eucharist in. He said he's going to get some new ones. He's going to work on that. Um, they should, what, they're supposed to be made out of uh, like some solid or precious metal, not plastic. And I know that we have some that have plastic on the inside. Um, we're going to try to use ones that are only, yeah, metal, precious, or at least, yeah, worthy metal to carry the Lord in, not plastic. Um, and so we'll get rid of the plastic ones eventually whenever Father Sean can get more. And then also, it's good to have like a decent size one. If you buy one yourself, these are nice because you can like grab the host uh, with your fingers and not have to like tip it over. Some of them are so small, they're like the size of a quarter and it's like, you can't like, you gotta like tip the whole picks over to try to get it out, which just isn't good. So using these ones that are a little bit bigger uh, is much, much better. And then how to carry it, was there a question? When you go like to a nursing home or a home now, you said earlier that you're not community books with more strains than that, the water that's having out of it. What do you do like at the nursing home or the home I lick my fingers. What? I lick my fingers. That's, how, that's what I do, yeah. Do what you can. Um, and then, like, what to carry them. There should be pouches as well in the same cabinet that these are if you're bringing communion to the, to the homebound. They just zip in here. And then there's a string to carry it around your neck, um, which is ideal. This, this has a chest pocket that's made for Pixis, so I could carry one right over my heart, which is nice. But I wouldn't, don't like carry it in your pocket, like your pants pocket or your back pocket or like with your keys or in your purse, like just ca yeah, carry it how it should be carried. Um, that way you won't forget either if it's around your, your neck. I shouldn't forget. Um, other things. Uh, Okay, so there is, we just, we actually just got, uh, just updated really instructions, a book, a big book. This is just taken from that. We've just made these small handouts for a rite for bringing uh, Holy Communion to the sick. And this is taken straight from the book. We just printed it so that it's simple, just two pager. Uh, and it's very similar to how things have been. So very similar. We just tell you exactly what you need to do. Start, you know, with the sign of the cross. Uh, you know, simple act of contrition, short reading from the gospel. You can read the daily readings if you'd like. That's kind of nice. Uh, but we put, you could, this will suffice as well. Reading from John, pray the Our Father, um, yeah, distribute the body of Christ. And then there's actually a prayer that we inserted for purifying the picks. And so, um, what you would do is, uh, I would say bring a purificator with you when you go to distribute. Um, and then uh, you'd open it up, pour some water inside, uh, pure water. You could, you know, if it's like a lid, this is a pretty big lid, you might be able to pour some water in there or just do your best to clean it with your finger, consume any particles, and then kind of just, yeah, let the water uh, swish around a little bit and then consume, you know, drink, uh, consume the water and there's a, and then just wipe with the corporal. Um, there is a prayer that the priests and the deacons and the acolytes pray when they're doing this and we put that in there so that you could pray it as well. A uh, simple prayer, what has passed our lips as food, O Lord, may we possess in purity of heart that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. Okay, and then there's a prayer, a concluding prayer at the end. Um, yes? Is there a particular prayer or way to prepare ourselves when we are going to be distributed? Like... Before you go, there's not a specific one given, 
but I mean any number of prayers, you know, the Memorari, uh, the Our Father, depends on how, yeah, how much you want to, you know, but it is a good idea to, yeah, prepare yourself a little bit, pray, ask the angels to be with you, you know, like the St. Michael prayer, or guardian angel prayer, I think would be great, um, yeah, we didn't put anything specifically in there, yes? Um, the person I take communion to, she watches the Mass on Sunday morning, so do I still, like, go through that booklet? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you would, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes? Will that be put into the binders that are out at the rest homes? We have a binder that has how we're supposed to... Um... I don't know if it will, but we'll make sure that you guys get these. The ones that you're using now, I think, are probably okay, but we'll, we'll get these out, yeah. Um, yeah, and then the purificator, you would, come, you would bring that back and leave it in the container of water where they put the purificators after mass so that it would soak. Yeah. I didn't think of that. Uh, well, it's different at each church. Yeah. And then, uh, or you could, you know, if you could cleanse it yourself. But if you're taking them from the church, you got to bring them back here. So it's better if you just bring them back here. Yeah. Yes. If you purify your picks back at church, do you still need to take them You wouldn't have to. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I guess you wouldn't have to. Back to church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She... Um, I think that's we're out of time and that's everything I wanted to get through uh, but I'll hang out if you have more questions yes is there going to be uh, I know in the past we've always been commissioned is that going to happen again? yeah for those who are not commissioned yet well aren't you supposed to do that every year or every other year not that I'm aware of if you're already commissioned yeah I don't you may be correct, but I will check on that. I'll ask Father Sean, and yeah, good question. But there will be a commissioning at Mass for sure um, in December, I believe. So that'll be forthcoming, and I'll send out, get some email info to you. All right, so let's, yeah. Could you uh, just, I know we're out of time, but could you briefly explain why we take so much care in the Eucharist? So like what the potential dangers are for someone who doesn't consume the Eucharist and takes it outside of the church. I try to put you on blast, but just try to... Sure. The importance of why we have so many rules and uh, ways that we, you know, take care of the Eucharist or the precious blood in that sense. Mm -hmm. The importance of that. Yeah. Like the spiritual side. Yeah, well, I mean, certainly one uh, would be... Uh, you know, like St. Paul says, he who, who eats and drinks unworthily is profaning the body and blood of the Lord. And so, uh, first of all, we want personally to be purified and, and living in the state of grace and all of that when we're receiving the Eucharist. Um, but also, we think of those that, uh, yeah, if, if anybody, I'd say, like, um, what's the word, maliciously takes the Eucharist or uses the Eucharist. Uh, it's certainly gravely sinful. Um, yeah, it's a very serious sin, so much so that you have to go to the Holy See about it. So, um, yeah, you do not ever want to let anyone uh, take, take the Eucharist for, for Ill, Ill, Ill reason. Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes people maybe, well, yeah, I'll leave it at that, but... Uh, yeah, so yeah, we got to protect the Eucharist. It's, and there are people that want to do malicious thing with the, the Eucharist. You know, there are, there is evil out there, uh, and seemingly more now than even when I was growing up. So, yeah, we have to have to protect the Eucharist. Um, 
yeah, it's entrusted to us. Um, yeah, I mean, it'd be a mortal sin if you're mishandling, you know, if you're maliciously handling or, or using the Eucharist for something else. So, yeah. I think it's just common respect for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right, right, yeah, it is, it is the Lord. So, yeah, did that answer your, I don't know, yeah, okay. I, I just want to tell something. It's about that how important it is to take straight to where you're going. Because mm -hmm. so I was actually in church and I thought, and I was helping marvelous and stuff, and I thought, well, I'll go to the Eucharist and I'll put it back on my purse and then I'll be ready to go. Father Pat looks around and he goes, Linda, he goes, now where is the Lord? I said, well, uh, he's in my purse right now, but, but you're still in church. You need to take him back till you're done. You, you, I said, okay. So that's how important it was for Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Can't mess around. Is it still required, required that the homebound and those in nursing homes pass the hour before? No, it is not. Um, I guess it's still like a, it's still a requirement, but there is exception for like the sick and those who are in those kind of situations. Because, yeah, so you just never know. I mean, you show up and they're drinking, you know, a shake. Like, so maybe you just give them some extra time or say, like, I'll come back in a little bit or, but, yeah. But you, you, we could never predict all, when all those things are going to happen for someone that's sick. So, yeah, uh, I'd say, yeah, so we, we, we do give them communion. Yes? Um, they, they should, yeah, they should keep the fast, yeah. If they're like eating a burger, you know, they shouldn't really keep the fast, yeah. Yeah. So, yes. If someone comes to you to receive the Eucharist and they, they want to receive it in the mouth, and they open their mouth, but they don't stick their tongue out, do you just... <laughs> yeah. You don't say anything. No, I'm I'm pretty good at yeah. <laughs> the, the slot, yeah, getting in, yeah, 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 you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes people don't open their mouth very wide well or stick their tongue out, you know, and yeah. So. Sometimes if people are carrying babies, I will, and they'll like go like this, I'll just go in their mouth. Body of Christ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, they're holding a the baby. <laughs> like, and then they got to like bobble their baby so that they could switch hands to, it's just like, yeah, no, just receive in the mouth. All right, why don't we uh, say a prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, Almighty God, good and gracious Father, we give you thanks for the gift of today, for this time together. We pray that we would encounter you each day in a deeper way in the Eucharist, uh, that we would be enlivened with greater faith, hope, and charity. Uh, and that we would come to love the Lord and the people that he has given us to serve in a deeper way. We ask this through the intercession of Mother Mary, St. Joseph, St. John, and St. Lawrence. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day. Yeah.